Okay, we're here for the start of the ball game. Pete Combs, a short kickoff taken by uh, number two, looks like J.I. Joplin, and uh, he's going to be wrestled down about the 34-yard line. Chuck Scoville, Donnie Daniels, and Brian Campbell here with you on WPRG TV Sports, and uh, we're just getting off at the kickoff because I tell you, Brian, there was a crowd coming in here tonight. The traffic lined up all the way out to the highway, and the weather very inclement tonight. This is the first game we've done in the rain. It ought to be an interesting one. Yeah. Going to be slipping and sliding out there probably in the, uh, by the halftime, Donnie. Uh, the field looks like it's getting pretty muddy there in the middle. It looks like both sides are, uh, from the hash mark over, are going to be real tough. Uh, middle of the field, not too bad yet, Chuck. A couple weeks ago, Pikeville had some great difficulty moving and controlling the ball on a wet field. Let's see what they can do tonight. There's an opening, though, taken by Hatfield up to about the 45-yard line. Nice gain by John Hatfield. Looks like Campbell in on the tackle for Hazard. Uh, Looks like Hazard coping up with a little even front against uh, Pikeville there, trying to counter that running game of Coach Bill Vars. Shane Van Hoos got banged up uh, in the early stages of the fourth quarter last week and uh, had an ice pack on his knee for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes, but uh, obviously he's healed up because he's back in there tonight at the starting quarterback. And uh, that'll definitely help that Pikeville offense. Uh, Pruitt has uh, played well when he's been in, but doesn't have the experience of Van Hoos. Right up the middle they go with Ben Coleman. Coleman gets some nice yardage before he's knocked down about the 39-yard line of the Hazard Bulldogs. The Pikeville opening up with the run, and so far very successful. Looks good. A uh, little uh, slam action on the right side, right behind two good uh, offensive people there, the guard and tackle, getting the people out. Uh, Hazard's got to do a better job of closing on uh, the speed of Pikeville's backs. I tell you what, Donnie, Pikeville was just very impressive and awesome last week against Cumberland, the best game I've seen them play in a long, long time, and looks like they're starting off tonight at least uh, on that same type of footing. Hatfield once again finds an opening, gets about five yards down inside the 35 to about the 33-yard line. Same thing to the left side, slam to the left side, and... Uh, Pyle will just line up and run right at Hazard. Must be in her game plan, Chuck. Last week, they didn't have to throw, and they didn't throw, but uh, just a couple of times, that running game uh, clicking on all eight cylinders last week, and so far, we've not seen the speed burner, J.I. Joplin. It's been Hatfield and Coleman, and they've been gaining some big chunks of yardage just right up the middle. Inverted wishbone this time by Pyle. Van Hoos has a flag down. Van Hoos on a keeper. He's got the ball Fumble. loose. The ball fumbles ahead, and who's got it? Does Pikeville come back up with it? It's like number 25 or 28. 25 is Coleman, and uh, looks like Pikeville came up with it, but we got a flag in the backfield, and it's going to go against the Panthers. Van Hoos does a good job on that option. He waits until he's hit and just about to go down before he gives up the football. That time he didn't give it up, got some nice yardage, but there was a flag in the backfield. Pipe was very successful starting off the ball game with uh, just running straight at Hazard, nothing fancy, just straight, straight ahead, second man through. First time they run the option there, Van Hoos had a good game and fumbled the ball, but um, Illegal procedure, that's going to back them up to about second and eight. So the football going to be spotted about the 38-yard line now for the Panthers. A lot of folks uh, here tonight, in spite of the bad weather, the field's ringed by fans. Uh, Pikeville's fans on the far side of the field, Hazard here on the side that we're at here at the press box. Van Hoos takes a snap, gives off last man through. Uh, J.I. Joplin gets his first carry of the night and picks up about six yards down to about the 30-yard line. Again, Pike will just lines up and runs straight at Hazard. Uh, must have been something that uh, Coach Alara saw in the game films that uh, thinks that he can, his team possibly could overpower Pike or Hazard. Tell you what, I thought last week was going to be one of those low-scoring rock'em, sock'em affairs, uh, knowing the way Cumberland likes to play in uh, Pikeville just opened it up and, and ran over, around, and through Cumberland. And uh, tonight, so far, they're starting off pretty good. This time, Van Fumbles. Oh, got a fumble. Has, uh, Pikeville still retains possession. Van Hoos that time did not get a chance to drop back and uh, pitch that ball out. He was hit as he was dropping back and lost the football. Luckily for Pikeville, they uh, held on to it, but uh, lost a yard or two. It's going to be about a fourth down and three situation for the Panthers. 
So it's a big fourth down situation for Pitebull here early going. Last week when they had short yardage situations, they picked it up about 99% of the time. Let's see what they can do on this important fourth down play in hazard territory. Van Hoos doesn't like what he sees. He's going to take a timeout. And with that timeout, we'll take a quick break here on WPRG Channel 5 Sports. Okay, welcome back here to Hazard, home of the Bulldogs and uh, Pikeville now after that timeout. Got that fourth down and three situation. Let's see what they've got called. They're right in the middle of the field. They give off to Joplin. He's got more than enough for the first down. Gets first down inside the 35-yard line down to about the 33. Let's see where they're going to spot the football. Maybe the 34. Another slam play on the left side. Uh, Hazard is yet to stop it. And uh, they're going to have to do something de defensively to uh, turn that around. So Pikeville opening up with a ball control type offense. Nothing fancy, just over the tackles and guards they go. And so far they've picked up about 45 yards on this opening drive. 7.53 left first period, no score. Pikeville's had the football from the very beginning of this ball game. Pitch out, Joplin, right side. Not much running room, he may get a yard. Pete Combs for Hazard, waiting for him there, made a fine defensive play, shedding the blocker and then coming inside and taking J.I. down. J.I. is not one of these folks that I would call a mutter, Donnie. A couple weeks ago, he had an awful tough time when we had a real nasty field up in Pikeville. He can't make those quick cuts and slants on a field like this as well uh, as a dry field, and it seems to bother him more than it does the, the bigger backs. Well, he's got such good moves, Chuck. And, uh, you know, when he wants to plant and go, he he's at full speed after his second step, but uh, on a mud field like this, it's, it's hard for him to get going again. Pikeville with a second down, call it nine from about the 33-yard line of the Hazard, excuse me, the 23-yard line of the Hazard Bulldogs. Van Hoos back to pass, got a man out there. That is Newsom, and he's in. Oh, and he drops the football. They're going to say a touchdown, though. Lost it as he fell out of bounds, but they said he had possession long enough for the score. Tony Newsom. We saw Tony last week, didn't we, Brian? Burn a long kickoff return. And uh, this time he used that speed, got open, and held on long enough for it to be called possession and a touchdown for the Pikeville Panthers. Good play action pass that time by Coach Alara. Faked the uh, power play to the right side and ran the bootleg here to the left of Newsom. And uh, last year, Tony Newsom had a big game over here at Hazard last year, Chuck. And uh, he's starting off with another big game here tonight. Jonathan Drage, the uh, young man from England, soccer style kicker, who's been very good this year, has the kick up and it's real low. It's no good. Flag on the play. Heard that whistle blow, didn't see the flag, but they're going to call procedure against Pikeville, and uh, they'll have a chance to try it again from five yards further out. Richard Ketchy had been doing a lot of the kicking for Pikeville, but uh, Drage came over as a, an exchange student, I think, from England, and he's done a real fine job for the Pikeville Panthers this year. Pikeville's had such a good offense, they haven't tried too many field goals, but uh, some of the point after kicks by Drage have been plenty long enough to bend field goals. Ball is set down. The kick is up and it's good. And the Pikeville Panthers take the lead by a score of seven to nothing with 654 left here in the first period. We'll be back with the kickoff after this timeout on Channel 5 WPRG Sports. Okay, welcome back to Hazard. And uh, I'll ask Donnie what the name of this field is. This is the first time I've ever been down here, Donnie. Well, that's a good thing because it's one of my favorite fields. It's Daniel Field. All right, okay. <laughs> that one we won't be able to forget then tonight. Uh, we're here at Daniel Field and Hazard as Eddie DeRamus gets ready to kick off. Gets a long, low line drive kick taking about the six yard line by number 32, that is Warren. Warren gets some nice yardage all the way out to the 43-yard line. Good run by Robert Warren. And he's fired up. He's one, and uh, one of the play hazard players coming up limping on the play. That's number 59, uh, Calvin Sharpie. And he's gonna make it off the field under his own power, though. Good field position for Hazard starting out. 
Warren got hit a couple of times, but able to just power his way right on up the middle to about the 43 yard lines where they'll start right in a nice muddy spot on the field. Referees doing a good job of it, keeping the ball off the field until it's ready to be snapped, trying to keep that ball dry and handleable, I guess, uh, by the quarterback. Uh, that is John Grigsby, the quarterback. He gives off to number seven. That's Pete Combs. Combs picks up about three yards, maybe four, over the right tackle. Got a chance to see Pete Combs a couple years ago, I think, up in Pikeville when they were playing. Some of these guys are seniors now, and they've played two or three years down here at Hazard. Very much so. Uh, Pete Combs, one of the best backs in the mountains. Uh, you know, he he's he's probably been around since the freshman year, starting in the Hazard backfield. Mark Walker split out right to the right for Hazard. They give the ball up straight over the guard, and uh, nothing there that time. The Pikeville defense stacking him up. Big hit there by number 40, May of Pikeville. And uh, I tell you, Donnie, he was fired up last week. He was jumping, and uh, I guess if he was able to do cartwheels last week, he would have done them. He was uh, one of the inspirational leaders on that defensive line for the Pikeville Panthers last week. Well, he's a, he's a very good nose guard, and uh, he plays some linebacker in their 50 alignment. But, uh, you know, he, he's, one, he's one of the better linemen in the area here in eastern Kentucky. Grigsby hands off this time to Pete Combs. Combs up near the first down marker. See where they're going to spot the football. It's going to be pretty close. Maybe a half yard shy. Let's see where they're going to officially spot it. Referees uh, going to take an official timeout. They may measure this one. I'd say uh, Coach Jones from Hazard will have to take a long look at this one after seeing his defense pushed around like they were the first series. You know, he, he thinks he might want to try to keep the ball a little bit more and uh, keep it out of the pipe with offensive hands. They got, if they don't make it, they've got just a very, very short distance to go, and it's going to be about a, maybe a foot short, about the length of a football short. Interesting call for a first-year coach. Well, I'm one of these gambling types, Donnie, on a fourth and a foot on my own home field. I'd probably go for it. If I couldn't make that right there, I wouldn't even try. I wouldn't even attempt to punt it. I'd just go ahead and get stopped, Chuck. Now, I think Coach Jones feels any high school coach, I'd say, feels the same way. And they're going to go for it with fourth and uh, less than a yard. Watch for a long count, Chuck. May try to dry, draw Pikeville off, off sides. Steve Kreitzer back in the lineup again this week. Uh, he was hurt for a couple of weeks and played pretty well last week, and he's back in there at the defensive end position, and he was all over the quarterback last week in that backfield. And Grigsby going to carry. Does he get it or not? Forward progress maybe where they stopped him, no. Looks like we got a bad spot. See where they're going to put the football here. He got up into the line before he was pushed back. It's going to be real close. <laughs> it's that all important forward progress and also the important spot there because uh, look to me when on the initial surge, Donnie, that he may have gotten that first down. That's why I guess the strap it shirts out there get paid a whole lot more than uh, the coaches do. <laughs> In that decision. Right? <laughs> They've got it just by about a half a length of the football. So uh, from our vantage point, we were pretty close on that when the uh, initial surge did get the first down. He was stacked up a couple yards back, but. Uh, Looked like the head linesman on the other side come in and made the spot, and uh, the guy, the linesman on this side come in and gave him the second spot after he saw it. So Hazard with the first down in Pikeville territory about the 48-yard line. Give off to Warren. Warren doesn't find much running room. Drags a couple of tacklers inside the 45, maybe to the 44. Give him about three yards on the pickup. Well, the rain's letting up, it looks like, a little bit, and uh, that's good news. <laughs> Very much so. Especially looks like uh, their high school field <laughs> is just like any other high school field. It's kind of bare in the middle at this time of year. It's hard to keep these fields nice, especially up here in the mountains when you get that cold and the bad weather and stuff. I'm a Florida boy and I'm used to green grass year round, but up here it's hard to keep it green. Nice run over the left guard that time uh, inside the 40 to about the, well, just inside the 40 yard line. Give them a third down and a long three. 
33, you know, uh, Hazard might be thinking about going four down situation here because, uh, you know, the way that Pipe was just lined up and pushed over them in the first offensive series, it was uh, unbelievable. Grigsby gives off to Pete Combs. Combs spinning and dives and gets the first down inside the 35 to about the 33-yard line. So Hazard picks up another first down, trying to control that football and keep it out of the hands of the explosive Pikeville Panthers. Good second effort by Pete Combs. He had nothing and uh, spun and uh, did an excellent job just getting the first down against the Pikeville defense. They're going to have to do some hitting once this game gets going because I tell you, once those uniforms get muddy, they get kind of slick and you're going to have to really hang on and, and chop them low to, to get them down, I think, after they get slicked up. Nice run by Warren. He breaks through several tackles. He's off to the races. Can they cut him off? Yes, they get him down inside the five, but a great run by Robert Warren on the right side. Good fake toss sweep, and uh, Warren takes the ball up in the three gap there, and uh, good run by him, or in the four gap, and uh, nobody around out of the blown coverage somewhere by the Pikeville defense. After he got through that line, Donnie, there was nobody there until way back in the defensive backfield. No linebackers out there at all on that right side. I think it's Pete Combs' time right here. First and goal from about the three-yard line. Give off to Combs, and he's going to lose some yardage. Back about the five, maybe six-yard line. Going to lose about three. Good job by 23 for Pitewell. Steve Kreitzer, big defensive end, comes in there and pulls him down. We were talking last week about Kreitzer. You know, he's one of these prototypical defensive ends. He's tall, he's lanky, he's quick, he likes to hit, and... Uh, you know, I don't think he's uh, major college material, but uh, some college here in Kentucky could use a kid like this. Get him in the weight room, put another 20 pounds on him, and uh, they'd have him a great defensive end. Straight up the middle, Hazard goes this time. Got inside the five to about the four. It's going to be third and goal from there. Pipe's defense, line up and go on defense, looking good right now. Um, they're going to be stingy getting, giving, pie, giving Hazard the six points. 2.08 left in the first quarter of play. Pikeville leads 7-0. Hazard threatening with third and goal from the four. Baxson and I, Warren the first back, and uh, Pete Combs the other back, and Grigsby going to try to take it, and he's not going to get it. He's going to be stopped at the two. Fourth and goal from there. I think that... Uh, Coach Jones is going to have to go for this. This is a big, important play for Hazard. If they get it, they're sky high. If they don't get it, it kind of takes a little wind out of the sails. I thought Grigsby had a little more opening than he did, Donnie. That defense closed on him quickly there and uh, stopped him short of the goal line. Well, you can't coach speed, and I think that's what closed it on him. Pikeville, not a real big team, but they are pretty quick. And the handoff going to number 24, that's Colby Combs, and he does not get into the end zone. He has stopped, and the Pikeville defense has held. They're going to take over from deep in their own territory, but the defense has done its job. Well, now Hazard's got to hold uh, Pikeville back in there in order to get some good field position, but uh, Pikeville will be uh, desperate to bring it out of there. Lots of great games going on all around the state of Kentucky in Class A action. It's uh, Fulton and Murray squaring off. Garrett County and Bardstown, the number one ranked team, squaring off. And Beachwood at Newport Catholic, the other Class A games. We'll talk about some other schedules after this. Hole in the middle and uh, off to the races. There's nobody out there. He's going to go all the way. Looks like Jason McCoy, number 27, is going to go for a 97-yard touchdown for Pikeville. That hole opened up in the line, and there was no one back there except white jerseys blocking for him, and he was off to the races. So senior Jason McCoy with about a 97-yard, 98-yard run for the Pikeville Panthers. Puts the Panthers on top 13 to nothing, and I'm sure Pat... McCoy is down here watching her son play, and I'm sure she's thrilled to death. I've known Patricia for, oh, I guess ever since I moved up here from Florida, and she and her husband, wonderful people, and I'm sure they're jumping the highest over on the sidelines across the way. 
So the Panthers try to make it 14 to nothing here as Drage out for the extra point. Bad snap, mishandled. Drage looking for help. He just drops it on the field and says, forget it. That makes the score. Pikeville 13, Hazard nothing. We'll be back after this timeout on Channel 5 WPRG Sports. Okay, welcome back to Daniel Field here in Hazard. And uh, after Hazard was knocking on the door, Donnie, Pikeville came right back on a second down play from their about their three-yard line, a 97-yard scamper by Jason McCoy, and that puts the Panthers up 13 to nothing instead of this ball game being tied. Hazard had a chance, but nice long kick, and it rolls over the uh, head of Robert Warren and rolls out of the end zone, and Hazard will take it from the 20-yard uh, line. You talk about a turn of momentum, Chuck. It's just Hazard was knocking on the door, first and goal on the three, four shots at it. Pipe will stop some, come out first play. Jason McCoy takes the ball, 97 yards. Could be a record, right, Brian? Longest one I've seen this year uh, from the line of scrimmage anyway, and uh, <laughs> that's really got to put a hurt on Hazard. You know, they were right down there and uh, could have tied this ball game up, and now they trail by two touchdowns. Hazard's going to have to come out and make some kind of mount some kind of drive here to just uh, keep a hold of the ball in order to stop that momentum Pikeville has. It's got Roberts and Colby Combs in the backfield. Gives off to number 20, Jason Roberts, and not much there. Maybe a yard. He could possibly lost a yard. And 23 Kreitzer's having a heck of a day. I tell you, he was all over the place last week. He and May and a couple of the defenders were just in the quarterback's face, and that quarterback was taking a pounding and being chased and harassed all night long. Uh, talking about Cumberland last week, and uh, Kreitzer's starting off much the same way again tonight. So that knee problem he was having uh, two or three weeks ago, obviously not affecting his play, at least so far in the early stages of this ball game. And that's the end of the first quarter. With a score, Pikeville 13, Hazard nothing. We'll be back for the second quarter of action after this time out on Channel 5 WPRG Sports. Okay, welcome back to Daniel Field in Hazard. Chuck Scoville, Donnie Daniels, the head coach of South Floyd, uh, the Raiders, and Brian Campbell here on WPRG tonight. Pikeville's got a 13 to nothing lead, and Hazard has the ball with a second and a, almost 11 uh, from their own about 20 yard line. Pass out to Warren out here about the 28. He steps inside, then back uh -oh. down uh -oh. the sidelines. He's got an opening, and he's off to the races. Can they catch him? Tony Newsom with a diving uh, try, and Robert Warren is going to take it 81 yards for the touchdown. Robert Warren sidestepping a couple of tacklers along those sidelines. I thought they were going to knock him out of bounds, but he stepped back toward the center of the field, then raced down the sidelines. They had a couple players with a chance to uh, shoestring tackle him. They missed, and Robert Warren gets an 81-yard touchdown and run. And just like that, it's back to a touchdown game. And uh, Pete Combs going to hobble on the field here, and some fireworks going off. Looks like Oh, has Pete got a shoe on or a shoe off? I think he's trying to get his kicking shoe on. He came out with just a sock and kind of one-legged hopped out onto the field and uh, trying to get that equipment on. Hopefully he can get it on in, in, before time is uh, running out on him. And uh, they're ready now for the snap. Pete Combs has got the shoe on. The kick is uh, down and blocked. Uh, blocked. Looks like number 11. Tony Newsom. Tony gave it that all-out try to catch Robert Warren. Diving try. Didn't get that, but he did get the extra point blocked, and that makes the score. Pikeville 13, Hazard 6. We'll be back after the kickoff after this timeout on WPRG Sports. Okay, welcome back here. 11.44 left in the first half, and Hazard has brought the game back to within seven points, 13 to six, and they're prepared to kick off. Chuck Scoville, Donnie Daniels, and Brian Campbell here with you from Hazard. Kind of a dreary, cold, rainy night down here, and uh, we're up here on the roof, and uh, my feet are already starting to get numb, Brian. I tell you, it's a little, little nippy, but uh, I tell you, I wouldn't miss this ball game. I know uh, you and I both have been sick all week long, but uh, 
we've been looking forward to this big matchup between Pikeville and Hazard. So uh, if they had to wheel me out here from the hospital, I'd be here tonight. Robert Warren with the kickoff, kind of a sidewinder kick to about the 20 yard line taken by Newsom. He's got a couple of blockers and gets out to about the 36, 37 yard line. It's like good field position again as uh, both teams have had good field position off their kickoffs. Saw Newsom break a couple of nice long plays last week and uh, he picked up about 17, 18 yards on that one. So that was a fine effort by Warren that time, Chuck. He uh, just a little short five and out pattern that uh, he turned into something himself. He sure did. He just kind of skirted that sideline, zigzagging down the sideline and uh, made the play happen and uh, brought Hazard back in here. And the fans are back on their feet over here on the Hazard side of the field. Handoff coming to J.I. Joplin and J.I. not going to get much there. No hole and he gets thrown to the ground. <laughs> Pete Combs. So Combs on both sides of this ball tonight doing some hitting. Gain of about uh, zero on there, second and ten. Well, one of the things Pipewell's had in our opening uh, drive there where they made the nice drive was uh, second and two, second and three. They never had to uh, throw the ball, so this might be a chance for Van Hoos to uh, show his arm a little bit. Who's got everybody in pretty tight. Bootleg again. Back to pass. He's got a uh, number 23. That's Kreitzer, the tight end open, and Kreitzer oh, God. up to about the 43-yard line before he's ridden down. Looks like a nice little skid mark over there from about the numbers over to the end of the bench. <laughs> sure was. He slid after he got hit. Third and about one yard, Pikeville. Kreitzer knocked out of bounds before he got the first down. Same play that uh, Pikeville scored on, Chuck. Bootleg action. This time he throws it underneath to Kreitzer instead of trying to hit Newsom deep. Looks like uh, Coleman and McCoy in the backfield. See who's going to get the handoff. Straight up the middle they go, and I think they've got enough for the first down. I think that was uh, now John May, I think number 40 may have carried the football. It's hard to get the numbers now. They're starting to get muddied up out there. Still another first down. John May was the ball carrier and he picked up the first down. Michael's got about six backs that can run at you, and all of them have got different uh, skills, and all of them have done a real fine job here the last couple of weeks. Up the middle they go. That is, I think, McCoy. Num Let's see if we can catch the number for you. 17. 17, John Hatfield with the carry. Saw the seven, and uh, he gets about nine yards, second down at about a yard. It's like the hazard coach staff's wanting a timeout. Official timeout. So Hazard going to get out there and talk about the defensive alignment, and uh, we'll go take a quick timeout on Channel 5 Sports. Okay, welcome back here. Um, Pikeville with a second down and a little less than a yard to go. Hazard wanted to come out and talk about defense as Pikeville starting to chew up some more yardage up the middle against that uh, Bulldog line. The rain, I think, has finally stopped. <laughs> Either that or I'm just soaked and don't feel it. <laughs> Second down and less than a yard. Give off to, looks like Eddie DeRamus got his feet cut out from under him, but I think he got enough. Looks like he got a good mark to get the first down. He dove into that line, and uh, I think where the ball ended up, he has enough for the first down. I want to thank my good buddy up at uh, Foxy 94 WIFX, Albert Kenser, for the use of a golf hat tonight so I can keep my glasses dry and see what's going on out there. I got down here tonight without an umbrella and uh, known Albert for a long time, and he kind of felt sorry for me and says, here, Charlie, take my hat. So I uh, want to thank Albert for the use of his hat here tonight during the ball game. 
Everywhere you go, you run into some nice people, though. It doesn't matter what town you're in or what you're doing, uh, you run into some good folks. And uh, Albert and his brother GC, a couple of those fine folks. First down for the Panthers. Got it by the nose of the football, so the Pikeville drive is alive at the hazard 42-yard uh, line. Looks like Pike will still just content to run the ball and uh, take what the, the hazard defenses give them. On this type of night, this type of field, they're not doing anything fancy, and as long as it's working for them, you know, they're just telling Hazard, come on and stop us, and so far Hazard has not been able to do that. Got a flag on the play, a uh, handoff off of the left side to McCoy. He picked up about three yards, but we do have a flag in the backfield. Maybe a hold on Pikeville. Let's see what's going on here. I think uh, one of the Pikeville linemen moved too fast. Yep. Legal motion on Pikeville. They're going to be backed up five. Give them a, sec a first and 15. Lots of other great games going on besides this one tonight. Of course, uh, Prestonsburg on the road at Russell. Prestonsburg, the number two ranked team in AA. Russell, the number three ranked team. Uh, and uh, Pikeville right now is ranked uh, number five in the state and uh, Hazard ranked number seven in Class A here battling it out tonight. Big hit in the backfield that time. There's a defensive charge by the Hazard Bulldogs. Look like Sharpie. And the tackle on uh, Coleman, I think, number 25, and he's going to lose a couple. They make it about a second down and 17 or 18 to go. <coughs> I tell you what, Coach Bill Letton and the Prestonburg Blackcast, and the hats off to them because there's my that's one of my county schools there, and uh, you know they've. They've done a fine job down there, ranked second behind Danville, and uh, I hope, uh, wish them the best of luck tonight down at Russell. That Prestonsburg Black Cat team, most impressive. We had a chance to see them about four times this year, and uh, they're just an awesome football team uh, in many aspects. Van Hoos on a bootleg around the right end, and he gets lots of running room all the way down inside the 30 to about the 26-yard line for the Panthers. Maybe uh, got more than enough for the first down. Ball uh, was needed to get to about the 32, and he got inside the 30. Good athletic ability by Shane Van Hoos that time. He reminds me a lot of uh, J.P. Blair. He's not quite as husky as J.P., but he's got good quickness, got a good arm, and uh, good option quarterback. He can kind of hold on to that football to the very last second, and you never know whether he's going to run it or pitch it out or pass it. Michael with a first down at the... 26 yard line of hazard. Everybody in close. They give off to J.I. Joplin. He's got a hole this time. Juke stepping inside the 10. He goes. Good move that time by the little counter play and Pipe will setting up shop inside the 10 first and goal. So, so far the Panthers have uh, not been stopped by this hazard bulldog defense. Got a first down about the nine yard line. J.I. Joplin with a nice little Step to the side and uh, through. They're set up about the in between the nine and the ten yard line, but it's a first and goal. <coughs> Ball resting right around the ten yard line. Van Hoos under center takes a snap, gives off first man through, surge up to about the six yard line. I think that was May once again on the carry. It's awful hard to see the uniform. John May, yeah. Of course, a couple other mountain teams a little further on down the road competing in AAA action tonight, Leslie County and Bell County. And Bell County has become one of those uh, 3A powers uh, year after year the last three or four years. Inside the five to about the three, That'd be a heck of a ball game. That'd be a heck of a ball game, Chuck. Bell County and Leslie. I went over and watched Leslie and Kaywood last week, and it was uh, the couch kid from Leslie County is just an exceptional ball player. So there's some good football teams down here in the mountains in class A, AA, and AAA playing tonight. Looking for that chance to go down to Louisville for the big one. 
third down from the four yard line is where they've got it spotted and still goal to go handoff counter play uh, down near the goal line still not in. So it's going to be fourth and less than a yard it looks like for the Pikeville Panthers. Ball about a foot away from the goal line. <laughs> fourth and less than a yard for Pikeville at the knocking on the door here. This is a big fourth down play for the Hazard defense and for the Pikeville offense. They can stretch the lead or Hazard can stop them here and it would be a big boost for the Hazard defense. It's been pushed around quite a bit on the ground tonight. I look for uh, the big fullback this time for Pikeville. Give off and nothing doing. They stopped the play so the Hazard defense has risen to the occasion. Looks like you have a player hurt for Pikeville. Got a player down about the two yard line. Can't get the number right now, but we do have a player hurt down there for Pikeville. There is an official timeout. So while they take time out to tend to the injured player, we'll go ahead and take a time out on WPRG Channel 5 Sports. Okay, welcome back to Daniel Field. Derek Hall, number 64, looks to be the injured player for Pikeville, and he's being helped off the field. Well, Chuck, we've seen two goal line stands tonight. One by Pikeville and that one by Hazard. So the Bulldogs, Pikeville trying to, you know, push him around, and the Bulldogs make a stand at the one-yard line and take over on offense. So instead of trailing 20-6, to six, the score remains 13-6. to six. So that's got to give Hazard a little bit of momentum and they're going to need it as they're operating from their own one yard line. Pike will keep the ball uh, five to six minutes that time on their drive and came up with nothing. Both teams are really trying to run a ball control type offense. Pike will the first time they had it ate up a lot of clock and scored that time. Uh, as you said, they kept the ball five or six minutes that time they didn't score and, and Hazard doing pretty much the same thing. Just running over guard and running over tackle trying to keep the ball in their hands. The biggest thing you don't want to do for Hazard right now is uh, have a mistake like a fumble. Grigsby has got number three. That is uh, Mark Walker out wide right. The handoff straight up the middle once again and not much running room, maybe out to the six yard line, close to the six. <coughs> I think that was number 24, Colby Combs on the carry. Pete Combs, number seven, checking back in as Hazard rotating some backs in and out as well. Pikeville usually uses about six backs and Hazard tonight has used four. And Colby back in and Pete back out before the play begins. I think Hazard just would primarily like to get a first down here. Got a third down and six from about the five and a half yard line. Grigsby gives off over the right tackle and close to the first down. It's number 24, Colby Combs. Does he have enough? I think he's going to come up short on this. I think he's about a yard shy as well, Donnie. And uh, down here is where I wouldn't be a gambling man. No, not down here. <laughs> you know, when I'm up, up, up on the other guy's uh, end of the field, that's fine and dandy. But uh, when you're down around your own 10-yard line, it's uh, awful tough. They're going to go for it. The clock is acting up now, too, where some folks have been having some trouble, and uh, Hazard's going to take a timeout, so we'll take a break on Channel 5 WPRG Sports. Okay, welcome back. Hazard's got a fourth down and one, and dropping back is uh, Grigsby, number 10. I think Coach Jones made the wise choice here, just getting the ball out of his end. Passer with a little motion and not much of a punt. It gets a nice roll and it's picked up on the run by J.I. Joplin down the sidelines and he's out of bounds about the 22 yard line. So Pikeville has great field position once again. Looks like we have a flag on the play. Let's see what this one's going to be called. 
And Grigsby didn't get off too good of a punt. It was a, and Pikeville's going to be called. So they could be called for clipping. That's one of those things you see quite often on a kickoff or punt punt return, and uh, Pikeville called for the clip, and that's going to move the ball back after a nice little run by J.I. Joplin got him down to about the 22-yard line. They're going to go back outside the 35 now to about the 37. They're still going to have plenty enough time, Chuck, to get into the end zone from here. Two minutes, 49 seconds left in the half. Pikeville leads 13 to six, and I'm sure they'd like to just run that ball straight up the gut, and use up this clock, and punch it in for a score before halftime. This game has gone by very quickly. There's only been a couple of passes all during the half. Not too many penalties, only had a couple so far tonight. And uh, we're here near halftime already. Van Hoos has the football, keeps it himself, and he gets inside the 35 to about the 33. Good decision that time by Van Hoos, uh, taking the ball away from the slam man and uh, going ahead and running the option. I think, uh, you know, in this type of field condition, Chuck, you're not going to be able to do a whole lot of things from left to right. You're just going to have to go north and south and uh, hope that you have a little bit more power than the other team is. Yeah, that's one of these nights where those cuts and those wide moves are going to be few and far between. And I think the long passing game is going to be pretty well taken out of it, too. And not much running room that time. Good stop by the hazard defense. Looks like number 80, Chris Cornett, one of the people down on the pile, and also number 59, Calvin Sharpie. Third down and seven for the Panthers. Under two minutes now. Pivel, I believe, have has a two timeout still left. J.I. Joplin, the, the ball carrier, that time didn't get any kind of a hole, and he's not one of those power type backs. You've got to give him a hole to run through, and another handoff. Uh, no, fake handoff, and Van Hoos fooled me, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown around the left end. That's something they saw the play before. Uh, Van Hoos had given the ball to the halfback inside on the belly, and that time he uh, just kept it, and uh, the play before, he's wide open, and this time he ran, come back and run the same play, and he keeps it and walks into the end zone. Great play by uh, Shane Van Hoos there. Did a good job of faking and hiding that football and took off around the left side and untouched all the way into the end zone. 19 to 6, Pikeville's got the lead, and uh, Drage coming out to uh, might go for well, they two. They go for two to get that 21. Yeah, I don't see him out there. And the field's real muddy there in the middle anyway. It's pretty hard to set up a kick. So Pikeville going for two. Joplin split out to the right. Van Hoos looks over the middle, uh, looking for Stephen Kreitzer. The pass behind him and the two-point conversion, no good. So the score remains Pikeville 19. Hazard 6 will be back with the kickoff after this break on Channel 5 WPRG Sports. <laughs> okay, welcome back to Daniel Field. Chuck Scoville, Donnie Daniels, Brian Campbell with you. The kickoff by DeRamus this time. A fairly short one bounces into the hands of Pete Combs. Up the middle he goes. Gets a little bit of an opening and still on his feet and uh, finally ridden down about the 39-yard line. It's hard to bring Pete Combs down there. Looked like it, uh, <laughs> Pete uh, kept his feet going there for and then uh, Doremus had a hold of him, but it's just a freshman against a senior. It's Pete Combs battling his way through, and uh, I don't know whether it's the weather or what here. We're getting a little <laughs> technical difficulties. I wonder if Dr. Don's got one of those peacocks that flashes on the screen, says, please excuse us, audio difficulties or whatever. Grigsby back to pass. Under a heavy rush, breaks through one tackle, but gets, fi gets finally gets sacked uh, behind the line of scrimmage for about a yard and a half, two-yard loss. Second down and about uh, 12 yards to go for the Bulldogs. 44 seconds, the clock counting down here in the first half, down to 40 seconds now, and the hazard showing no inclination of stopping the clock. I think they do have one timeout left, but uh, right now they're just ready to go into the locker room, it looks like. Grigsby dropping back, pitch back, 
Pete Combs going on a halfback option, throws the ball way out there, and it's down into the hands of the Pikeville defender and intercepted back there. And Pikeville wants a timeout. I think that was Shane Van Hoos on the interception. Down at the Pikeville about 22, 23 yard line. Well, it might be good just 19 seconds to go that uh, Pike will just uh, take a knee and go in with a big lead here at halftime. So we'll see what happens here. The uh, Panthers have a first down after that interception by Van Hoos. Ball about the 24 yard line is where they've got it spotted. Shane Van Hoos going to take it straight up the middle himself. And that's the end of the first half with a score. Pikeville 19, Hazard 6. We'll be back after this break. Talk about this one on WPRG Channel 5 Sports. <laughs> Are you going to get this? Right. Yeah. You want me to bring it back or anything? Anyway? Ha, <laughs> 
Ladies and gentlemen, the Hazard Independent High School, Band of Gold. Okay, welcome back to the second half kickoff. Eddie Doremus kicks the ball. It's a short kick taken by Colby Combs, number 24. He fights off a couple of tacklers and gets some nice yardage out to about the 42-yard line, Donnie. Well, it looks like it, uh, Hazard's going to set up shop pretty good shape here, Chuck. Uh, good return by Colby Combs, and uh, we'll find out what this Hazard ball club's made of here in the early of the second half. So Hazard's going to have the ball in good field position, their own 42-yard line, opening plays of the first um, second half. Excuse me. They trailed 19 to 6, and Pikeville kind of took it to them on offense, and it could have been a little higher score than that, but Pikeville failed to score there in the second quarter, and Pikeville comes right back out on defense. Big hit in the backfield. Well, it looks like that uh, Pikeville's going to start off with their six-man front, and uh, you know, the interesting thing about the halftime was that uh, Hazard went inside to the, where the dry, warm confines of the locker room, and Pikeville stayed outside and down here in the end zone, so uh, maybe the Bud Grant theory of uh, once you get dry, you don't come back out and play good as when you wet. I don't know. I'd like to have gone someplace dry and warm. Would have loved to have had a cup of coffee or something during halftime, but there... There's a crowd of about 200 waiting to get into the boys' room, so I said, if there's that many waiting to get in there, forget the uh, concession stand. And uh, once again, stacked up right at the line of scrimmage, that Pikeville defense tough. Well, it looks like, it, uh, again, Pikeville's lined up in six-man front. Pikeville is, uh, looks like, much more physical than the Hazard team this year. Uh, last year, I thought Hazard was a little bit more physical than Pikeville, but uh, this year, Pikeville's done a great job in the offseason and uh, just manhandling Hazard so far. Pikeville has been able to control the uh, lines of scrimmage both offensively and defensively, as Donnie said. And uh, so far here in the opening phases of this third quarter, they've done a great job. Big rush on uh, Grigsby. A pass is thrown. Looks like it hit the ground before the receiver got it anyway. It was not enough for the first down had it been caught. And it's going to give uh, Hazard a fourth down and a, and uh, see where they're going to. Well, the ball was not caught, so it's going to be a fourth and about ten for the Hazard Bulldogs. So uh, Pikeville has done a fine job to start off here on defense. And uh, see, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. Our monitor not working. Hopefully the uh, hopefully the uh, camera is still working. Back to punt is Grigsby for Hazard uh, back deep. Maybe J.I. Joplin gets off a low bouncer to Joplin. Joplin looking for some running room. Not much there and he's going to go under right where he caught the football. Well, it looks like that time Pete Combs did an excellent job of containing Joplin out on the left hand flanks there and uh, you know, uh, Pipe was still going to sit up pretty good around the 26 yard line and uh, the main thing for Pipe now is just don't turn the ball over. Keep the ball in their hands and uh, get another seven and eight minute drive down the field. So far in the first half, Pikeville able to chew up large sections of uh, yardage and the clock. Uh, ball control offense, they only threw a couple of times. Uh, the time they threw uh, was, was short to uh, Kreitzer. They've been able to move the ball on the ground. Let's see what they can do here to start off on offense for their first possession of the second half. Van Hoos gives off second man through over the left guard, maybe a yard or two, not much running room. Pipe will open up in the inverted wishbone that time, and uh, looks like Hazard's adjusted their defense to come out in a six-man front so that they can have uh, more people up within two, three yards of the ball. Of course, there's one danger in that. Uh, Van Hoos, a good passer, and they've got uh, Newsom, Richard Ketchy, and also the tight end Steve Kreitz are all capable of catching the football when you commit everybody to the line of scrimmage. It puts a heavy load on one or two guys back there in the secondary, doesn't it, Donnie? Well, it does. Uh, the, you're going to have to take chances, I guess, when you're down like that, though. Well, looks like the uh, chance worked that time. No running room whatsoever. I think J.I. Joplin got the ball. Not very good footing right in that part of the field. Very muddy, and Joplin a unable to get anything whatsoever going. It's going to be third and ten for the uh, Pikeville Panthers. You know, the uh, one thing about the six-man front, I play a six-man front at uh, South Floyd, and uh, if you do get creased up in the inside like... Uh, the play here down the 97-yard run, it's hard to get somebody back there to contain them. 
Third and nine and nine and a half almost 10 yards really for the Pikeville Panthers and they're going with a handoff once again and that didn't fool anybody they're going to lose some yardage on that play a couple of yards and the hazard Bulldog defense is held on this possession. Well the draw play that time did not work hazard bringing six men up there and with their linebacker and uh, Kobe Combs trying to get his fans and his team fired up. That kind of surprised me on a, a third and ten situation there for Pikeville that they would the, try the draw play. Uh, I guess they had seen some wrinkles in the defense in the first half, but that, that time it didn't work. Uh, Pikeville may have to uh, open up a little more on uh, on offense uh, next time out, huh, Don? Well, a possibility. Uh, uh, you know, he's still got the lead, so they don't want to get too fancy. Back to punt. Van Hoos, and the punt's blocked. Hazard comes up with it down there. Looks like Colby Combs and the guys swarm under at the 10 yard line. So the Hazard Bulldogs are going to have great field position. Well, that's the big play that uh, we was talking about. Bible don't want to make the turnover and uh, end up getting a punt blocked. And in these field conditions, it's rained all during halftime. And uh, it's just going to be a mud slop here from here on in. And uh, three yards in a cloud of dust or a ball of mud, it's, it's going to be both ways, Chuck. Jason Roberts, the man that blocked the punt, he and Colby Combs down there to cover the ball up at the 10 yard line. So Hazard knocking on the door here, first and 10. Spin move by Warren, he's into the end zone for the touchdown. Broke through the line and scored. Good move, that's the same play that Warren ran down to about the three before and uh, Hazard's back in this ball game. They sure are. That's what you call getting the momentum back real quick. They block a punt, first play, run through the line, break a couple of tackles, and the spin move by Robert Warren into the end zone. Ten-yard run by Robert Warren. Pete Combs coming out for the point after, and the fireworks going off once again down here in Hazard. They obviously are keeping those dry. Looks like they're going to go for two. Well, Warren... Uh... Uh, Combs kicked the first extra point. Now Warren's going to come in and try the second one here. No good. I thought they were going to go for two once I saw Combs uh, go off the field there, Donnie, but uh, Warren decided to kick it, but still uh, awful tough to get that ball and spot it good on this muddy field. Well, it is, and uh, Hazard still just down seven points, so that's a touchdown and an extra point. So, uh, you know, I think it, uh, that's a wise choice by the young coach here. Okay, we'll go ahead and take a timeout with a score. Pikeville 19, Hazard 12. We'll be right back after this break. <coughs> he knew some number 11. He goes up the sideline to about the 31, 32 yard line and Hazard fired up down there, Donnie. Well, it's definitely a big momentum swing. Uh, Hazard come out at uh, halftime and uh, they've got a lot of seniors on this ball club, Chuck, and they've been through the war, so uh, you know, expect them to come back. They're just not going to roll over and quit. This team started off this year, I thought, with some pretty gutsy scheduling last year. People down here were pointing the fingers, say, well, you played a soft schedule and you weren't ready to play. This year they started out playing teams like Beachwood and Rockcastle County and some pretty good ball clubs. And uh, Hazard's kind of come on strong here at the end of the year. Well, I think so, too. And it never hurts to play the good teams. That's for sure. Pikeville up at uh, the line of scrimmage, Shane Van Hoos. Van Hoos given, uh, fakes the handoff. He's still got the football, and there's nothing much there for him. He's going to be stacked up. No gain, maybe a loss of one. Hazard's definitely made some adjustment on their defense at halftime. Uh, you know, six-man front, and they've definitely con been concerned with the second man through and the option from Pikeville. Loss of a yard on the play, second and 11. The Pikeville Panthers uh, so far sluggish on offense starting this second half. Whatever Hazard's done on that defensive line has so far seemed to work for him. And uh, as Donnie said, they've got that momentum swinging their way now, and uh, they're fired up. Pikeville needs to uh, get some yardage here. See if Van Hoos is going to go to the air. He's only got one wide out to the left side, and we've got a uh, whistle before the snap. There's a flag on the play. Flag on the play. Let's see what they're going to call here. Too much time against Pikeville. Pikeville looks a little bit unorganized here. Uh, they didn't get to play in in time there, and that's going to bring up second and long. Second and about 16 for the Panthers after that delay of game penalty. 
So definitely uh, things not going as smoothly for the Panthers here in this second half, starting off uh, as they did in the first half. 6.05 left the third period, 19 to 12 is the score. The Panthers have the ball and the lead. But right now, Hazard is uh, threatening to jump right back and take hold of this one. See what the Panthers can do on second and long. The rain coming down uh, harder in this second half than it did any time during the first half, and it's really making the field treacherous. Van Hoos back to pass. Downfield he goes. He's got a man open, and it's, it's caught. It's caught, I think, over there on the sideline, and a flag on the play. Well, it looks like it's going to be pass interference against Hazard, and J.I. Joplin, I believe, was split out that time and made a heck of a catch for him. He kind of spun around and got open and pulled that ball in, and there was a little pushing and shoving going along the sidelines there. I couldn't see that he caught it, but uh, by the crowd reaction, it was obvious that he did over there, and I think Pipel's going to have a big gainer and maybe a penalty tacked on to it. Guys, I believe that was the first penalty on uh, Hazard, Hazard tonight. Hazard. Yeah. Possibility. I've, I've seen a couple of motion penalties against Pipel, but I think uh, that is the first penalty, in fact, against Hazard. And it was pass interference, as Donnie said, uh, against the Hazard Bulldogs. And uh, so the catch, good by Joplin, and that's going to add a little bit of yardage to it. Ball going to be spotted down here now at about the 37-yard line of the Hazard Bulldogs. So uh, Shane Van Hoos first long pass, a successful one. A little mudding up the middle there. Looks like maybe Jason McCoy on the carry, about three or four yards. Well, it looked like it, uh, Pipe was going to go back to the uh, wishbone here and try to power the ball in. Second and seven for Pike. Well, it was J.I. Joplin on the carry. As we said, some of these uniforms getting awful muddy. It's getting hard to see you down there, and we're a long ways up here at the top of the press box. Number 17. Well, I was closer the first time then. There was a seven on that jersey, uh, the carry. It was uh, John Hatfield, 17 on the carry. Picked up three, second and seven for Pikeville. We'll do the best we can. We're a good ways away from the action here. Hand off over the left guard. We've got a bunch of flags flying. Looks like the possibility <laughs> of a face mask or a holding. So what the referee's going to call here. And a hold. Yep, illegal use of hands against Pikeville. Well, that's going to take a three or four yard gain away from them and back them up the other way. Can I go? Be about 10 yards uh, from the. Brian over there getting his vitamins for the day. Vitamin A, B, C, and D. Tell you on a cold night like this, you need uh, vitamins L, O, V, and E too, you know. Uh, it's awful cool out here. Now my hands are starting to thaw up. 10 yard penalty. It's going to be second down. About 17 yards to go for Pikeville. What do you think Pikeville's going to do in this situation, Donnie? Well, the bootleg pass has been real good to them here earlier in the first half, so possibility they might throw it. See what happens here. Second down and 17 to go for the uh, Pikeville Panthers. Ball still in hazard territory up at the 43-yard uh, line. Van Hoos back to pass, looking over the middle. He's got a man open, and it's caught by Steve Kreitzer, number 23. Kreitzer picks up quite a bit of that yardage, maybe about 14 yards, give him about a uh, third down and three to four yards to go. So that's good. That, that was a good play action pass that time by Van Hoos. Kreitzer has been a big receiver for him here tonight. Kreitzer getting it done on both sides of the line. A great defensive end for the Pikeville Panthers, and he's made a couple of important catches uh, at tight end for the Pikeville Panthers tonight. Third down and four yards to go for the Panthers. The ball at the Hazard 31-yard line. This rain coming down good and steady right now, and it's uh, played havoc on our equipment. We've got two headsets out and also the monitor out, but we're still here uh, live trying to bring you this action as best we can. Van Hoos on a keeper, and he's not going anywhere. Going to lose a couple. <laughs> Looks like, again, Pot will trying to run left to right, and uh, the field condition is just not going to help them out tonight, Chuck. Those quick scampers to the outside by Van Hoos and uh, Joplin, some of these other folks, uh, not going to be easy to do as this field gets muddier and muddier, and Van Hoos tackle for a two-yard loss. It's fourth down and six. They've got the ball pretty deep in hazard territory. I'm sure they're going to go for it here as uh, the ball is at the 33-yard uh, line of hazard. 
And uh, Van Hoos has had some pretty good success passing this football when he's had time to pass. And Pikeville's going to take a timeout, so we'll go ahead and take a timeout on WPRG Channel 5 Sports. Okay, welcome back here to Daniel Field. Chuck Scoville, head coach Donnie Daniels of the South Floyd Raiders with us tonight. And Brian Campbell, as always, ever faithful on camera. And uh, fourth down and six for the Pikeville Panthers. Important fourth down. I tell you, Hazard's got the momentum. Pikeville would really like to get this first down and try to take a little of this wind out of the Hazard Bulldog sails. Van Hoos back to pass, looking for something. He's got a man open. Kreitzer, he's got the ball and the first down. So Pikeville with a big pass to the tight end. Same play that they run to get the uh, ball up from second down. And uh, again, Kreitzer, big play for them. And uh, look for Hazard, maybe have to adjust to that. Tell you, it's rough when you stack that line, looking for the run, trying to stop that run. And Pikeville's got some good receivers tonight. They're going with a shorter passing game to the tight end most of the time. And Kreitzer's been right there catching that football. Uh, they also have folks like J.I. Joplin, Richard Ketchy, and others that can get out there. Tony Newsom that can get out there on the sidelines and burn you on the long stuff. But in this weather, that tight end, very important in the offense. Hand off up the middle, leapfrogging a couple of tacklers and going through the line for about a six-yard gain. See who the ball carrier was. Was that, was that May? No. Number 17, John Hatfield, I think, with the carry. Another good game. It's going to bring up second and four. And uh, when you got second and four, you can just do about anything you want to with the uh, offense there for Pipeville. I think Pipeville, possibility of here, just keep the ball on the ground and run straight ahead behind the right tackle there. They're doing a good job now, finally getting some holes in that short yardage situation that weren't ha happening early in this uh, third quarter. And a big hole in the middle, and J.I. Joplin down near the goal line. Big hole that time for J.I. Joplin. It's good counter action, set the power eye to the right side, ran to the left, and uh, the Pottville front five is doing a great job right now. J.I. Joplin had plenty of room that time. He just scooted down, and he was finally upended about the one-yard line. Going to be first and goal for the Pikeville Panthers. So Hazard, that first possession of Pikeville, they were able to stop him. Obviously, Pikeville talked some things over, and they got this ball moving and moving on the Hazard Bulldog defense very well right now with a first and goal of the one-yard line. Van Hoos gives off straight up the middle. No signal by the referee. Looks like he's going to be stacked up before the goal line. Another goal line situation for Pikeville. I believe if uh, Van Hoos might keep the ball on that power play, he'll walk into the left corner of the end zone. Second and goal, the ball still spotted at the one yard line. It is turning downright cold out here now too. It was pretty pleasant in the first half, even though it was raining, but now that temperature starting to fall and uh, uh, like, what was it, Pink Floyd? We're becoming comfortably numb up here. <laughs> Second and one for the Pikeville Panthers. Hand off up the middle over that right tackle. A touchdown for the Pikeville Panthers. We'll get you the number for you as soon as they unpile. It's very hard to read the numbers with all that mud on them. Who was that? J.I. Joplin on the carry. I'm glad they called it. I couldn't see a number. Donnie, it's getting awful hard to tell who's who out there. Well, with the white jerseys, definitely so. Uh, I couldn't tell either, Chuck. It's just a <laughs> slam play to the right, and uh, finally Pikeville puts it in the end zone for a 13-point lead. Pikeville going for the extra point. It looks like uh, Jonathan Drage is going to come out there. and. Uh, Got a timeout here. Pikeville's going to take a timeout. We'll go ahead and take a break on Channel 5 Sports. This is a day in the park compared to two years ago. I can't believe this. Man. Back to live action. Doug Powers, number seven, do hold for Jonathan Drage as they try the extra point. 25 to 12 is the score. Can Drage get the kick through? It's blocked. Once again, that bad field playing a point on this. Well, definitely the kicking game is going to suffer, of course. 
uh, blocked punt by Hazard on Pike one. Now they blocked extra points. So uh, Hazard's came out good as far as the specialty teams come tonight. 25 to 12, the Pikeville Panthers with a 13 point lead over the Hazard Bulldogs. Pikeville eating up a lot of time on that clock on that last drive. Just a minute and two seconds left in this third quarter. And uh, one blessing, I guess, tonight, this game is going by rather quickly, Donnie, and that's, that's good considering the weather. Well, definitely so. They, uh, there was an eight minute drive there, two fourth down conversions that Pikeville had that were played big in that drive. And, uh, you know, <coughs> look at number 23 for Pikeville because he did a heck of a job for him. And uh, also Van Hoos, two big plays from both of those kids. It's Pikeville ready to kick off. Let's see who's going to do the kicking. Looks like number two, uh, Eddie Deramus, number three, Eddie Deramus out there to do the kicking for the Panthers. Uh, Eddie's had varying degrees of success kicking the ball off uh, in this ball game. A couple of them have been real long. A couple of them have been pretty short. Let's see what he's going to do this time with the ball. Eddie's got the uh, power in that leg to drive it into the end zone, but it's awful wet out there right now. And the ball uh, traveling down to about the 14-yard line, picked up there by Combs, number seven, and Combs takes it all the way up near the 40-yard line. Well, both teams tonight have had excellent field position from their kickoff return teams. And, uh, you know, Hazard needs to set up here and go down, not panic, put the ball in the end zone to get back in this game. Pipewell, on the other hand, needs to come out with a big defensive stand here to take control of the ball game. Leslie County trailing Bell County in a triple-A ball game, 27 to nothing. So uh, Leslie County had a great year, but I tell you, Bell County is becoming uh, kind of like the Pikeville of the triple-A set, Donnie. Uh, they've been awful powerful, awful strong football team the last two or three years. Most definitely. They've, they've done a real good job. Robert Warren on the carry. He breaks a couple of tackles around the left side and carries it all the way down to inside the 25-yard line of Pikeville. So Robert Warren says, come on, guys. Let's get out here and get fired up as he carries another long, a long gainer. That's another <laughs> same play he scored on, same play he had a big gain on the first half. And uh, look for him to get the ball here in the last quarter. Robert Warren's got some good speed and quickness, also a strong runner. He can carry some tacklers with him, break some tackles. And uh, Hazard now with a big first down play. They have got the ball at the 24 and a half yard line of the Pikeville Panthers as they're coming back in this one, trying to pitch out to Colby Combs. Colby Combs around the right side, tripped up by Tony Newsom, but not before he gets about eight or nine yards down to about the 15 yard line. And that looks like, Chuck, that might be the last play of the third quarter, and uh, Hazard's going to have it second and one at the 14. That is the end of the third quarter with a score of Pikeville 25, Hazard 12. We'll be back after this timeout on Channel 5, WPRG Sports. Okay, welcome back to the fourth and final quarter. Chuck Scoville, Donnie Daniels, and Brian Campbell from Daniel Field here in Hazard. Hazard's got a second and one at the Pikeville 14. Warren gets stacked up, but he's got enough, I think, for the first down, Donnie, on that carry. Yeah, just same play that they ran to the left side. They brought it over here to the right side that time, and uh, Warren got enough, look, apparently got enough for the first down. He's got that good, strong leg drive, and it's awful hard, you know, if there's any kind of blocking at all for Robert Warren not to pick up a couple of yards, and uh, Hazard gets the first down, keeps the drive alive. The ball going to be spotted just inside the 14-yard line. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. And uh, Pikeville not ready or set on defense. They're going to take a timeout here to talk things over. And... Uh, Hazard, I tell you, Donnie, they just keep right on going. They're not going to give up in this thing, and they're right back here knocking on the door trying to get back in this ball game. Well, they got a lot of, like I said earlier, they've got a lot of senior, experienced players. Uh, that's, they're not just going to roll over. These kids have been in through the trenches. They've been down. They've come back. Uh, they trailed Beachwood earlier in the season at halftime and come back and won that game. So uh, don't look for Hazard to stop until the final whistle sounds. And this Hazard Bulldog team, I'm sure after losing a close one to Pikeville last year and, and uh, the year before getting beat, uh, you know, they'd like to, you know, return the favor on Pikeville and come back and beat the Panthers here. Uh, kind of like Cumberland, you know, it seems like uh, Pikeville's always playing Hazard and Cumberland and Hazard and Cumberland always wanting to beat them. And uh, Hazard down here on their own field with all these seniors would like nothing better than to 
take a trip out of here to Beachwood or Covington Catholic next week, or Newport Catholic, excuse me. Oh, definitely so. They, they definitely want to go up there and play in the Final Four. Hazard with the football. That's Grigsby pitching out to Colby Combs, and Colby Combs doesn't get any running room. He gets a couple of yards, though, before he's knocked down about the 11-yard uh, line. Good counterplay this time by Hazard might work. Uh, Pipeville, good pursuit that time. Uh, three Pipeville defenders over there running Kobe Combs down at the left side. And I'm sure the uh, Big Dipper is going to go down the road with Hazard if, if they uh, can pull this one out tonight because he's been fussing all year long after Hazard beat Beachwood. Dave Cantrell and the Lexington Heralds had Beachwood rated ahead of him every week, and he doesn't like that too well. And uh, talked to the Dipper before the game and about this ball game, and uh, we'll tell you about that a little later. Pass broken up by Pikeville. It was intended in the end zone for number three, Mark Walker, incomplete. Well, a little bootleg type action and uh, good defense that time by Newsom, I think, over here in the left-hand corner of the end zone. Had a chance to talk to the Dipper before the ball game. He's got a bad knee and not able to get up here into the press box. We wanted to talk with him before the ball game or at halftime, but uh, he does a paper down here and covers the mountain sports and really gives these mountain kids uh, a lot of coverage and uh, also does some radio work and talks about high school football and uh, really does all he can to keep the uh, mountain sports kids' uh, dreams and hopes alive, at least in the press. And nothing much there for Grigsby. He's going to end up at the line of scrimmage after scrambling around for about 15 or 20 seconds, and it's going to be fourth down for the Bulldogs and about eight yards to go. Well, another uh, play-action pass, and uh, Pipeville had it well defended, Chuck. And like a lot of us down here in the mountains, you know, we hear a lot of uh, comments and things uh, from Louisville and Lexington, and we've got a timeout for Hazard. We're going to take a timeout here on WPRG Channel 5 Sports. <laughs> Hazard with a very, very important fourth down play, fourth and eight from the 12-yard line. Grigsby under center. Steps back, looks to pass, big rush. He's got a little bit of running room and he's gonna get knocked down about the six yard line. I don't think he's gonna have the first down. It's gonna be short. I think it's gonna be Pipeville's ball on about the uh, five and uh, big defensive stand for the Panthers. Grigsby got a big rush by the Pikeville Panthers and oh, well. I thought he got knocked down and uh, knees hit the ground about the six. He may have slid forward to the five. The uh, marker is down there between the four and the five. And from where we were standing, I don't think that they have the first down, but we'll have to see. Uh, here's the referees bringing the chains across. As we were saying earlier, a lot of these folks in Lexington and Louisville and the newspapers don't give these mountain teams in basketball or football uh, enough credit. and. Uh, some of the folks that do some writing and, and talking about football down here, like the Dipper uh, and like us here at WPRG, think we've got some great athletes here in the mountains and uh, we've seen a lot of great play teams and a great play all year long and we want to take our hats off to these, these boys that have been out here all year working so hard. And we're telling the folks downstate, you better be ready for us because we're coming down. Pikeville gets the ball, they held on fourth down, Donnie, so uh, that's got to really be a painful fourth down uh, play for Hazard there. They were right down there on the 12-yard line and unable to do anything with it. Oh, definitely so. Now Hazard, or Pikeville has the ball with 10 minutes to go, and another uh, four or five-minute drive will surely kill this off, even if they do come up empty, Chuck, because uh, Hazard has to score twice. What Pikeville needs to do is get the ball out from the shadow of their own end zone, get a couple of first downs, work some time off the clock, and I think we got a fumble. I thought the ball bounced out there. Looked like the ball bounced loose, Donnie. Well, could have uh, Van Hoos might bobble the ball, a uh, little quarterback sneak there, but uh, he just wants to make sure that he ha keeps his hands on it. No fumble here deep in uh, hazard territory. Van Hoos able to keep control of that football, only gained about a yard second and nine. The ball about the seven yard line, so Pikeville deep in their own territory. Tell you, we've seen some fine football teams this year in uh, both Virginia, West Virginia, and Kentucky. Got to see Matewan, we've seen Pikeville, we've seen Belfry, we've seen Hazard, Prestonsburg, Sheldon Clark, and these kids can play with anybody. That time, a good defensive surge by the Hazard Bulldog defense. 
and uh, Pennington uh, gets Joplin, and Joplin loses about two, and uh, Hazard stiffening on defense right now. Hazard needs a big play right here from someone. Uh, last time they had Pipe in this situation, they had a block punt, so uh, maybe a uh, Kretzer time here. Steve Kreitzer's been the man they've gone to in this ball game on third down plays as the tight end. Let's see if they go to him again. One man split out wide to the right for the Pikeville Panthers. We got a flag and a whistle before the snap. See what, flag on the play. see what the call's gonna be. Procedure against Pikeville, so that's gonna take them back half the distance. Make it a little bit tougher. They had a third and 10. It's going to be about a third and 13 now. Still doesn't think, I still don't think it's going to change what they want to do, but uh, it's going to just make a little bit longer play for them. And the ball's going to be at the three yard line. So if they don't get this, Hazard's going to come out with some great field position. Oh gosh, yes, definitely so. And uh, always right in here, you got the chance of a block punt. You sure do with this tricky footing in the mud out here tonight. It's going to be awful hard to kick the football and have Pikeville going to run with it, and uh, they're not going to get much back to the five. It's going to be third and 10 or 11 yards to go for the Panthers. They're going to have to boot it away to the Hazard Bulldogs. And unless uh, an extraordinary punt comes out of there, the Hazard Bulldogs are going to have great field position. Well, it looks like it, uh, Hazard's <laughs> going to bring 10 men up on the line of scrimmage and uh, overload one side. So Van Hoos is going to have to get off a quick uh, and hopefully long kick here if you're a Pikeville Panther fan. Hazard, on the other hand, looking to get the uh, pressure on the punter. It's not been easy. That's one good spot in the end zone, at least there, where Van Hoos is kicking from. He gets the kick away, bounces to the 40-yard line where it's taken there by... 32, Robert Warren, and he's tackled about the 34-yard line. So Hazard's got plenty of time, and they've got the ball in good field position, Donnie. Well, Hazard has to uh, convert quick here. They can't have a time-consuming drive to take the ball in. 7.31 left in the game. So, uh, you know, in these field conditions, uh, Pipeville's still setting pretty good right now. Yeah, the Pikeville defense has done a good job, and Hazard has the ball in real nice shape, but like Donnie said, only 7.23 left in this one. They need to score within a minute and a half, two minutes, so there will be some time left for them after Pikeville gets the ball back. Handoff up the middle to Warren. Warren picks up about uh, six, seven yards on the carry. Give him six, second down four. Give him about five yards from the first <laughs> Grigsby lines up. He's got uh, Walker, number three, split out wide to the right. Grigsby rolls out, gives off to Walker. We got a flag on the play. Well, it looks like he had illegal motion in the backfield from Hazard. Dead ball foul there. So uh, that brings second and uh, 10 for him. So that five yard run by Warren's going to be taken back the other way on a penalty here. Illegal procedure, illegal motion there, man in motion in the backfield before the snap. And a second down and call it nine and a half for the Hazard Bulldogs here. The ball resting at about the 33 yard line of Pikeville. It's getting hard to read the yards uh, out on the field too now as the uh, Cleats in the mud pretty well obscuring some of the lines and some of the yardage markers, especially in that middle part of the field where Grigsby's standing to take the snap. Grigsby drops back, rolls out to the right, looking for something, getting a rush, going to throw the ball up, and uh, closest man there was the defender for the Pikeville Panthers, uh, Jason McCoy, and the pass incomplete, make it third down and nine and a half. <laughs> well, it looks like uh, Pikeville read the pass, play action pass real well that time, and it's going to bring up a third and long for the Hazard Bulldogs. Uh, Ivo is sitting in good position right now. Ball sitting in the middle of the field, and uh, the rain's still coming down. Looks like a good night for the Pipe Panthers so far. Panther defense, when it had to, has done a great job, and uh, Grigsby back to pass, looking out there. A swing pass to Warren on their left side. Warren's got some room, breaks the tackle. He's got the first down and out of bounds. He goes about the 12-yard line. Warren got out of the backfield that time for the Bulldogs, and uh, 
Pipeville got caught in a blitz. Nice pickup that time by Kobe Combs, number 24 of the blitzing linebacker, and uh, looked like Warren wide open in the flats. They had a uh, man after Grigsby, but they left Warren open there in the flats, like Donnie said, and uh, he got that first down. Warren has been uh, their main receiver tonight. The wide receivers, I don't think, have caught a football. It's been Warren on the important receptions tonight out of the backfield, and there's another one by Warren. He slips, but he makes a catch inside the 10 at about the seven-yard line. Well, another same pass play, only to the right this time, and uh, Hazard picking up good yardage on first down. That was good for Warren to hang on to that ball because his feet went out from under him as the ball came to him and he just uh, caught the ball and as he was falling to the ground there, no footing there in that part of the field. It is just a mud bog. Grigsby handoff this time. Looks like Colby Combs inside the five to about the four yard line. Well, the thing that Hazard can do, Hazard can pick up a first down here. Uh, it's two down area, third and about three, but uh, Hazard can pick up first down on about the one and a half. So a third and a little over three, and like Donnie said, the yard marker outside the one there, so they can pick up a fumble, and uh, it's covered up by one of the linemen for Hazard, number 50. Looks like Jack Patterson, and uh, he picks the ball up, or falls on it, to save it for Hazard, but they're going to lose some yardage, and it's going to make about a third down and about eight and a half yards to go now. Well, Hazard has to, has to get a, it's fourth down and go, or uh, fourth down and about nine, and uh, they have to get to the one yard line. I don't even know if they're worried about that uh, first down now with 442 left. They need to get that ball into the end zone. Pitch out by Grigsby to Colby Combs and nothing there. The Pikeville defense is held and uh, Grigsby pitched the ball out, but there was defenders all over the place over there, Donnie. It looks like that um, Hazard ran to the short side of the field trying to get some good traction, but uh, Ivo did a good job that time of uh, defending the option. So the Panthers now have the football in a 13-point lead with only 435 left in this one, and that's really got to hurt the uh, Hazard chances there. They had an opportunity. They were down around the five-yard line, fumbled the football, lost about five yards, and they were unable to get the first down or get the ball into the end zone. And uh, Pikeville now, uh, if they can get a couple of first downs, could pretty well eat up this clock. They lead by 13 points, 25 to 12 with 414 and counting. Shane Van Hoos just going to hand off straight up the middle they go. <coughs> like J.I. Joplin may be on the carry. No, Jason McCoy, number 27. Well, Pivo, under four minutes now. Only thing they're worried about is just hanging on to the football, getting two and three at a whack, taking 25 seconds off the clock every time they snap the ball. Second down, six yards to go for the Pikeville Panthers. 3.44 and counting left in this one, and a lot of the Hazard faithful starting to file out of here. Uh, once again, it looks like the Hazard Bulldogs are going to come up short against this Pikeville Panther team uh, for the third year in a row. Van Hoos up under center, loses control of the football. Who's got it? Hazard says they have it. And the Bulldogs do have it. Hazard gets the break that they needed. Uh, still have to get two scores, but uh, that sets him up inside the 10 yard line. That's something that Pottwell definitely didn't want, want to do. So the Panthers making a mistake down deep in their own territory. They're gonna give the ball back up to the Bulldogs at about the eight yard line and Hazard with the first and goal. Uh, call it the nine is where it's spotted. First and goal from the nine yard line with 322 left in this one. Hazard needs to score and score quickly. Grigsby back to pass. He's got Walker wide open in the end zone. Touchdown Bulldogs. So the Hazard Bulldogs pulling the pan out of the fire there. Touchdown to Mark Walker in the corner of the end zone, and Hazard's right back in this one. They trail 25 to 18. Hazard getting back in the ball game now, down seven. Uh, the extra point bringing within a touchdown. I wouldn't be surprised to see an onside kick or something like that after the kickoff. And the fireworks going off once again down here in Hazard. Who's going to kick the extra point? Warren comes out. Pete Combs comes out. Pete Combs going to go up to the uh, line, though, to block. Warren's going to try the extra point to try to bring this ball game within six. And it's blocked. 
Mix still remains a seven point game. Pikeville 25, a Hazard 18. We'll be back after this timeout on WPRG Channel 5 Sports. Welcome back to Daniel Field here at Hazard, Kentucky. Pikeville 25, Hazard 18, 314 left in this ball game. Chuck Scoville, Donnie Daniels, and Brian Campbell here with you on WPRG Sports. And everybody up here, Donnie, is talking about an onside kick. Well, I think so. 314 to go, and Hazard's used a couple of their timeouts. So, uh, you know, I think you right now you have possibility to look for one. I would say that they would probably try one. You know, uh, no matter who gets the football, the ball's going to be around midfield. In these conditions, uh, it doesn't really matter where the ball is because uh, Pikeville it can score from any place on the field. So uh, Hazard, well, that's not really an onside kick. That was uh, about a 20-yard kick on the ground. Well, he must be going to play uh, field position. I Thinking maybe he might want to kick it deep, uh, squibbed it through there, but the mud just held the ball up there, Chuck. So uh, Pikeville, Kearney Weddington, number 24, covers the ball, and Pikeville will start out in good field position from the 40-yard line. What Hazard is uh, thinking of, what Donnie Daniels was mentioning, talking about field position, if they can stop Pikeville here, uh, they would get the ball back in reasonably good shape. Ball spotted at the 39-yard line is where Pikeville will take over with 2.57 and counting left in this ball game. First and 10 for the Panthers. Van Hoos gives off. Don't know the number. It's obliterated by the mud. A couple of yards gained. Second down and eight for the Panthers. It's like J.I. Joplin uh, had to carry there. And Hazard takes a timeout and it stops clock with 2.42 left in the game. We'll go ahead and take a short break on WPRG Channel 5 Sports. Once again, the live action here. Hazard taking a timeout to stop the clock and talk things over on defense. Pikeville with a second down and about eight yards to go on a little short run by J.I. Joplin. Pikeville not really looking to score. They're just looking to eat up that clock. With 242 left in this ball game. I tell you, this Hazard Bulldog team, you got to give them credit every time every, they were on the ropes and about ready to be counted out. They came back fighting and punching, and they're still in this ball game if they can get the football back. Straight up the middle they go once again, short yardage, two, maybe three yards to about the 45-yard line go the Panthers, and Hazard wanting another timeout. Well, that's their last timeout, Chuck, so uh, with 2.31 left, Hazard has no timeouts left. It's going to be third and looks like round six for them, so uh, this will be the season for the Hazard Bulldogs right here. They need to stop Pikeville, force Pikeville to punt and get that ball back. If they can get the ball back after stopping Pikeville, they'll have a couple of minutes to operate, but uh, they've got to stop them on third down here. Some, some success here in the second half for the Hazard defense. They played a little better here in the second half than they did in the first half. Oh, very much so. Uh, good adjustment at halftime from Hazard uh, on defense, especially Chuck. Pike would just lined up and run over in the first half. And I expected this ball game to be a pretty close ball game. Didn't expect Pikeville to run away with it. Hazard's been playing some great ball as of late, and they're a proud football team, and they're playing at home. So I figured they'd go right on down to the end fighting. And Van Hoos breaks a tackle and dives up near the first down. He's going to be about a yard shy, up about the 49-yard line. It's going to bring up a fourth down, and uh, the clock's around the two minute mark, so it's decision time for Bill Lara and the Pikeville Panthers. Ball spotted down about the 49. Looks to be about fourth and a long one here for the Panthers. And do they go for it or do they punt? Uh, with the field being the way it is, they haven't been able to get off too much in the way of a punt, but if they don't get the first down, Donnie, it'll give Hazard pretty good field position. Well, look for Pikeville maybe to take a uh, delay of game here and uh, run the clock. 142 and counting here for the Panthers. Delay of game, Delay of game against Pikeville, and Donnie call that one right on the head. 
138. The clock is stopped as uh, some players shuffling on and off the field. Looks like Pikeville will definitely punt now. Uh, at least that's the indication we're getting by the players going on and off the field for both teams. But they were able to milk a few more seconds off the clock. Well, with fourth and two, I was thinking maybe Pikeville might try some kind of trickery to draw them off sides. But uh, Bill Iyer, being the smart coach he is, he's going to punch the ball down deep in hazard territory. Hazard got everybody stacked up on the line. Referee's blowing the whistle here. We got a little confusion on the field. Referee's talking over some things out there, and I guess we'll get back here to live action. They may be having some problems with the clock. Maybe the clock started before the referees indicated it should. Got 135 right now, and uh, they're going to put three seconds back on the clock. That's what they're indicating down on the field. We make it 138 uh, as Van Hoos gets ready to take the snap. <laughs> well, they're having trouble with the clock here, Donnie. It's counting right on down. <laughs> Stop it at eight and then run the uh, second digit up to three. <laughs> They may have to run that thing down to 38 seconds. I don't know, and then put a minute on there. I don't know. Well, I think it might be an older clock, so uh, they'll have to run it down to a minute and then reset it to two and run it back down to 38. No, they're going to have to run it all the way down. So, huh. For the possibility, it could run down to 38, and then they click the minutes back up there, Chuck. I, I really don't know. Uh, all right, there we go. Okay, here we go. This is the ball has been standing out there in the rain, so center has been on top of the ball. Ball will be a little slippery as Van Hoos gets ready to kick the football. It's a high wobbly kick. About as good as could be expected in these conditions, and it just kind of thuds and dies. 25 yard line, but Hazard will have to go 75 yards with a minute and 29 seconds left in the ball game. It's going to be tough, Chuck, because uh, under these field conditions, there's just not going to be anything that uh, Hazard can do as far as misdirection or trickery because it's just they're not going to be allowed to. So the Hazard Bulldogs, Hazard Bulldogs going to be. 75 yards away from pay dirt here with a minute and 20 seconds and counting. They have no timeouts and uh, they're going to be running the football, which is kind of strange, but they get the ball up near the first down, about a nine yard gain for the Bulldogs there on that play. And the clock continues to run. Well, Hazard definitely needs to get in now the huddle. This is playing into Pipewell's hands, taking time off the clock. I'm surprised that they're not running for out of bounds or throwing the ball out of bounds to stop the clock. A running play is not going to do it uh, with this short of time left on the clock. And the ball knocked away by Pikeville. Good heads up play by Shane Van Hoos. Thought he might could have picked that one off. He just knocked it down. Shane Van Hoos intercepts that. That's a ball game. And uh, 46 seconds to go. Hazard's got to get the first down now with three third down. So uh, look for them maybe to maybe take another chance deep and then get the, get the first down. Third down and one, 46 seconds left on the clock. Hazard needs to get a first down, needs to stop the clock. Grigsby back to pass, over the middle they go. First down is good, it's down to about the 40 yard line, 39 yard line. Brian Campbell, not the cameraman, the other Brian Campbell for Hazard. Uh, he can't be two places in once. He's an amazing individual, but uh, we've got the vid Jim Dandy. If yeah, Brian Campbell. <laughs> but uh, he gets the first down at the 39-yard line. The chains are moved and the clock running once again. 35, 33 seconds left in this one. Grigsby back to pass. A flag on the play. Drops back. Walker out there, the intended receiver, and the. Uh, Ball knocked away on defense by Pikeville. I don't think Hazard had enough men on the line of scrimmage at that time. 
see what the call's gonna be here. Look like that uh, Hazard doing the only thing they can is throw the ball deep, take a chance, throw it up, and um, maybe hope that one of the receivers catches the ball while the defender falls down. First and Illegal motion on the Hazard Bulldogs, first and 15 with 24 seconds left. The ball going to be brought back to about the 34-yard line of the Hazard Bulldogs. I tell you, it's awful tough to try to play a passing game uh, in these conditions. The receiver's having trouble getting upfield, making their cuts. The quarterback's got a ball that's uh, got to be a little bit muddy and slippery no matter how well the referees have protected it tonight. Grigsby back to pass under a big rush, and he slides and falls down. Kreitzer after him, and uh, Mark May also in the backfield after him. 13 seconds, 12, the clock ticking down. Hazard may have a chance for one final play. Well, this is it. Hazard's last play. We've got a flag on the play. Grigsby being pressured, gives the ball off to Warren. Warren on the run. Warren's going to go down about the 49-yard line, and the Pikeville Panthers are going down the road. They've defeated the Hazard Bulldogs 25-18. to Well, there's still a flag on the play here, so uh, the Hazard Bulldogs. I think so, too, Donnie. I think there was a, either a hold or some motion back there, and uh, it's got to be on the, on the offense. We've well, got Hazard uh, illegal procedure. And they'll decline that, and it looks like the Bible Panthers have brought out a victory here. So there was a penalty on the play, and it's against the Hazard Bulldogs. It's declined, and that's the ball game. Final score, the Pikeville Panthers 25, the Hazard Bulldogs 18. And for Donnie Daniels and Brian Campbell and myself, Chuck Scofield, we'll see you down the road next week as uh, Pikeville will take on either, what is it, Beachwood or Newport Catholic? One of the two Northern Kentucky schools, and uh, Pikeville's in the Final Four again, Chuck. So, uh, good Lord willing, the creeks don't rise. Uh, we'll be down the road to see the Pikeville Panthers uh, as they go to the Final Four with a victory, 25-18 to 18 over the Hazard Bulldogs tonight for all the sponsors tonight. We want to say thank you so much and to all the folks that have been with us all season long. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you later on WPRG Sports.